then welcome <laughs> to the Grid Impedance um, Conference, the first time in this year, and also uh, welcome to my presentation uh, today. Um, in the agenda, I started um, nearly the last one, but uh, yeah, I want to uh, change. Uh, I, I have asked if it is possible to change uh, my presentation so that, that I can start um, within this conference. So um, welcome to my uh, presentation today. And uh, I am uh, Tan Chung Do. I am the CEO of uh, the uh, company More Energy located here uh, in Hamburg. And uh, the topic I want uh, to talk today is um, about a measurement campaign we made last year at the Alsam Transportation um, Company in uh, Salzgitter. And uh, we uh, made he here uh, first measurements in a rail case. So it is uh, a very uh, novel uh, results we uh, could get. So um, I would like to share um, our experiences uh, within this uh, conference. So I start my presentation with a very short overview of what uh, we do at More Energy. So uh, we uh, started our company from the Helmut Schmidt University uh, at the professorship um, electrical energy system uh, at Professor Schulz. Um, and uh, we are a measurement technique manufacturer from Hamburg uh, with a very special products uh, for grid impedance measurement. So this is a, uh, this are our unique uh, selling uh, proposition at the company. Uh, on the uh, right side, you see an overview of our products. You see the Momi uh, 4.0. This is a, a product uh, we offer tailor-made intelligent power quality mo monitoring solutions. And uh, we have the ONIS 600 uh, and 1000 uh, for the different uh, voltage level, 600 volt and, th and 1000 volts. These are mobile systems um, and our target customers are grid operators and researching institutes. Um, uh, furthermore, we have um, at medium voltage, the uh, grid impedance uh, measurement container. Uh, this is uh, a container that we have uh, developed at the Helmut Schmidt University. And uh, we offer with this container uh, measurement services um if uh, if um yeah customers want uh, to measure the quit impedance but also the, the system impedance of electrical systems um in this with this product we work together with the Helmut Schmidt University so also in the uh, project at the um Alstom company last year uh, where we uh were there with the Helmut Schmidt University team, uh, our team and the Alstom team there. Um, in the middle of the picture, you see our container uh, transported uh, to the infra uh, testing infrastructure of the Alstom. And here we had the possibility uh, to test the grid and the admittance measurement, uh, admittance uh, of the grid infrastructure and also of the five part traction unit of the Coradia Continental VR1440 of Alstom. So um, Alstom Salzgitter is uh, yeah, the biggest uh, location within the Alstom group. Uh, Bombardier also belongs to, um, to Alstom. So uh, with Alstom, we have a very good customer uh, to test um, our technology. So the question is, why should we do uh, such measurement? So grid impedance measurement and the admittance measurement of the traction unit. So all the uh, requirements uh, for measurement comes from practice. So in practice, uh, there are operating failures of uh, traction inverters that leads to uh, yeah, electric tractions get out of order. And uh, the reason uh, was not easy to, uh, to find out, um, but uh, yeah, there are many uh, technical working group uh, working on that. And uh, the general 
uh, error description is um, that uh, in the grid where the tractions are connected, there are parallel resonances uh, courses by the grid infrastructure. So we have uh, transformers there and we have uh, long cables that leads to parallel resonances. And um, because of this resonances, instability um, within control system of tractions uh, could occur that leads to very high level of harmonics. And um, yeah, in the same time, it leads to uh, uh, over voltages. And over voltages, uh, on the other hand, leads to unintentional triggering of protective systems. That's the reason why um, the tra electric uh, tractions get out of order. Um, and um, yeah, the reaction uh, to uh, those problems was that um, there were requirements established. Um, every um, traction system that has uh, to get uh, the type um, compatibility uh, test um, should have uh, a so-called traction uh, uh, unit test uh, within the uh, the norm, the standard uh, DIN EN 5388. Uh, there are two parts, part one and part two, but relevant uh, for this um, compatibility test is the part two. Um, up to now, this uh, kind of tests are standard in Germany, Austria, Swiss, Norway, and uh, Sweden. Uh, mostly uh, for system uh, for 60.7 Hertz, but uh, the same problem you um, also have at 50 Hertz. So um, also uh, for 50 Hertz, uh, such uh, measurement uh, tests uh, have to be done. So what are the contents of uh, this um, relevant norm uh, that have been worked by uh, some of uh, technical working groups. Um, this norm uh, defines technical criteria for the coordination between power supply and rolling stocks to achieve interoperability. Um, as I have said, there are two parts. The first part is the general part and the relevant part um, for um, our consideration is the part two. It's about stability and harmonics. So um, the coordination um, between the power supply and the um, tractions uh, in the consideration of stability and harmonics. Um, as you can imagine, uh, this norm is a very extensive document. Um, so we uh, would need uh, a lot of time to, 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 um, to, to tell all about aspects there. But uh, in this uh, picture, in this graph, uh, I can show you the main aspects uh, uh, that are within uh, this norm. So what you can see here is, um, yeah, the limitation frequency uh, defined. This is normally uh, the, uh, the, the frequency uh, that we get uh, from the fifth, uh, harmonics of the nominal frequency. So uh, at, um, um, at at real case, we have the nominal frequency of 60.7 Hertz. So the limitation frequency is round about um, 90 to 120 Hertz. Uh, so the limitation frequency is defined there. There are a left part and a right part. Um, and the left part uh, defined the region where resonances of grid impedance is not allowed. So under the limitation frequency, the uh, rail companies like uh, DB or SBB, OBB, they are responsible that um, resonances within um, their grid inf inf infrastructure uh, does not exist. So this is in the responsibility of the um, infrastructure owner. On the right side, um, there is uh, the uh, definition that the input admittance of the traction should not be active. That means um, the admittance or the 
or also the impedance of the electric system has to be measured. And um, the phase of the admittance should not uh, exceed uh, plus or minus 90 uh, degree. This is what uh, the right side said about that. So um, there are two uh, things have to be done within this comparability test. Uh, on the one hand, uh, to uh, determine the quit impedance of the quit infrastructure, and to de determine the admittance uh, of the uh, of the of the of the traction. Um, up to now, there's no possibility to measure the quit impedance. So, in the norm, um, there is also uh, proposed uh, to calculate the the quit impedance, um, but this is very complex. And I come to, to it later that we can also to do it with our technology. And on the other hand, to measure the admittance um, of the uh, traction unit. Uh, in the norm, uh, there is a proposal of uh, measurement set up uh, that you can see here. So um, you can see on the uh, left side, there is a, a, a voltage source that can generate um, sinusoidal signals uh, from 100 to 500 volts. And uh, this excites um, the electric system of the traction um, unit. And by measuring the voltage and the current, uh, the, the answer of the excitation signals, you can calculate the admittance, uh, as you can see here. And this is, um, yeah, the content, the main content of, of the norm uh, to implement, uh, to make a proposal, how to implement such a measurement setup on the one hand, and that the quit impedance has to be calculated. That means that you have to know a lot of uh, information about um, the inside quit um, of the rail companies. Um, what is state of the art? Um, in practice, um, the measurement setup is realized, uh, as you can see here on this picture. So you see uh, in red uh, pointed line, uh, you can see here, this is the, the, the device under test. And then you have another uh, traction unit that is modified as a harmonic source. And then this um, traction unit uh, feed into uh, the grid harmonic uh, voltages and uh, excite the system and then measure voltage and current, you can calculate the admittance of the uh, device uh, under test. The inductor, you can see here, um, this is a serious inductor. This has the function to, um, yeah, to, 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 to make a higher voltage drop uh, in order to get uh, better measurement results. Uh, this is um, the state of the art, how uh, real companies have realized the measurements up to now. But we came not from a real uh, world, uh, but we came from, uh, from renewable energy, a grid integration world. Uh, so um, we have a completely different method uh, to, to, to do this excitation. And the, the, the method, I think all of you know it, uh, we have a pulse load there using a power electronics to, um, to switch a control, uh, the, the, uh, the very um, powerful load there, get pulse signals. And by that way, we get um, the information of the, electric, uh, of the electrical system. So you can see here, this is our um, measurement uh, system with the spectral excitation and our container is connected on the uh, left side with the grid and on the right side with the device in the test or the traction unit and we measure on the left side uh, voltage and current and on the right side by that way we can get both uh, information uh, of the system so the grid impedance and the electrical system uh, impedance and uh, we do the measurement uh, up to two kilohertz. Our uh, container uh, can also uh, up to 10 kilohertz, but uh, only up to two kilohertz is uh, required within 
uh, the norm I have uh, told you before. And so you can see here uh, our container connected to the grid and also uh, with the um, uh, with the traction system. All the measurement we have made it on uh, this uh, testing uh, in, uh, infrastructure. Um, uh, this is uh, on uh, on the the location of Alstom uh, Salzgitter, and they have they produce their system there and have also the testing track. Uh, the length of this testing track is 1.3 kilometers. Um, they have both voltages, 50 kilovolts and 25 kilovolts, uh, 16.7 hertz, but also 50 hertz. So all the measurements uh, that uh, are required in the norm can, um, can be made here uh, at this testing infrastructure. So you can see here, this is 1.3 uh, uh, kilometer. Now I would like to show you our measurement um, results. Uh, this is a result uh, without um, connection of the traction unit. Uh, so we measure only the grid um, at uh, the grid infrastructure uh, of the testing infrastructure of Alstom. Uh, the uh, black line is the uh, absolute value of the impedance and the red line uh, is, is the phase. So what you can see here that we have um, a resonance at, uh, at, at uh, yeah, 180 uh, Hertz uh, uh, with 1.2 uh, kilo ohms. Yeah? And uh, typical of this curve is that we start with inductive and then get uh, capacitive behavior. And this resonance uh, comes together because uh, on this testing infrastructure, there is a, a transformer and also a filter system installed there. And that's the reason why we have this characteristic uh, parallel resonance. And what we can see here is that the resonance point exceeds the limitation frequency of 100 Hertz. So we are within uh, the norm. Now we have a grid impedance measurement uh, when the traction is connected into the grid. And you can see a damping effect um, when the traction is connected into the grid. So we have a much lower um, level of the absolute value of the impedance. Uh, and yeah, also the, um, the resonance frequency uh, shifted to, a, uh, to uh, some higher uh, frequency. Now I bring two curves uh, together and you can see here the, the difference between two different states with and without uh, traction. Without traction, there are no damping factors. So we have higher level of impedances. Yeah, and uh, the reason uh, why we were there is that uh, Alstom wishes uh, to have a reference a measurement because they made such measurement um, uh, one year before at SBB in Switzerland, and they have already uh, measurement results. And the idea is uh, to test if our method uh, works also, um, like the method they have realized now, uh, the idea behind is uh, that uh, maybe to use uh, our uh, method later because it is uh, easier to install and yeah, it needs much uh, less uh, manpower and uh, from, from that side also financial um, uh, are needed uh, for uh, using our method. So you can see here the reference measurement result we got from Alstom and they didn't uh, give it before. Um, so we were there and made our measurement independently and uh, got the result later. And here you can see the results we got with, uh, with a container uh, up to two kilohertz. And uh, bringing them together, you can see it is nearly exact the same curve. And uh, yeah, we couldn't believe it in the first time, but exactly, uh, yeah, we, we could get, uh, we could get uh, this result. Um, this is the, the absolute value. 
um, of the admittance, but what's very interesting is the face uh, to see. And uh, yeah, above you see, uh, you see the reference curve and below you see the, uh, the curve from more energy. And yeah, both are similar curves. Uh, and what we can all, uh, we also can see here is um, that uh, the phase is within um, the allowed area. That means um, the traction uh, does not behave as an active uh, part. So it is a, a good sign for, for this uh, traction unit. Yeah, all in all, it was a very successful uh, measurement uh, campaign. And we could uh, get nearly the same uh, results uh, as Alstom got from SBB last year. And uh, also we could um, get grid impedance uh, results with uh, the same container. And this is also the first time that could be realized in a, uh, in a real system. And uh, yeah, Next steps are uh, that we are planning with Alstom and also other rail companies to do uh, this, um, this, this, uh, this measurements. And uh, my proposal is uh, that we can see um, there is a benefit uh, to, to, to measure grid impedance and also impedance uh, frequency dependent uh, impedance of electrical system, uh, as we can see in the norm here. And my proposal is to transfer such norm in also other uh, grid integration area like wind, solar, and e-mobility. And by that way, uh, yeah, we get a high compatibility of grid infrastructure uh, with inverter-driven electrical system. Yes, thank you for, <laughs> uh, yeah, that you have heard <laughs> to me up to now. And uh, yeah, if you have question, you're welcome. Yes, thank you, Mr. Do. Um, I see one uh, question from uh, Dominic Ogo. Uh, Dominic. Yes, hello, everybody. Um, thank you, Trang, for a very interesting uh, presentation. Um, I, I like that you really explained the situation with the standard very well and that we can see make the connection with the measurement very well. So uh, congratulations for that. Uh, my question I did not really get if the train system is, is it is it uh, working is the converter need to be active and how is it done with the locomotives that is not allowed really to, to move. Um, do you mean um, the the traction unit, or do you mean the the whole train? The traction unit. Yeah. How uh, is the converter on? Yeah, on it was on. Voltage? So, um, yeah. so um, they, uh, so um, we it, it was on, um, but uh, in 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 part um, in part uh, operation mode. Um, and uh, also that uh, they were um, gebremst, so in the bremse. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, definitely uh, the, the traction uh, was active. It's, it's uh, not, it does not stand still. It is uh, also in, in the norm that the traction has to um, uh, have, um, yeah, a part uh, of, of, of this power, not the full power. So the full power, we have uh, some of megawatts, but um, yeah, up to uh, up to uh, yeah, I think it was uh, one hundred uh, kilowatts. Um, um, so in, in in this area, and uh, yeah, we we could see the um, the inverter in action with our measurement. So they give poor talk on the on the motors, but they keep the brakes on. Yeah, yeah. the brakes on. Yeah. But that okay. sounds that sounds quite <laughs> dangerous. But okay, so uh, up to ten percent, I think. Ten percent, yeah. Ten percent of the power. So they're working against the brake. So and the converters are working with some power at least. Yeah. Impressive. Thank you.